Uh, I, I, can I do the intro how he said it? Winfield Garnett, the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> I love it. He told me I had to do it. Oh, no. I had to do it. Um, okay. Listening to him can lead you astray. Uh, well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. It was good. All right. It was a good one. Okay. Coach Garnett, how you doing first I'm off? I'm good. Today? I'm going very well. Yeah. yeah? I'm talking to you, so I'm, I'm real good. Oh, okay. Nice. I'm just happy that we're here, and it's 70 degrees. It's unbelievable. November, we thought we'd be freezing. The weather's outstanding. I've been to this event probably five or six times, and You're half the time it's, right it's usually in gloves, and, uh, and right. I'm in shorts today. Right. Uh, unbelievable. You have a son on the team. Yes. Everybody but him has a son on the team. Yeah, he's everybody's uncle. He had an older son and a daughter. He, produ he produces a lot of girls. Uh, but, um, yeah, yeah, I had an older son that was a quarterback last year, and now I'm going to have a younger son who's in a fifth grader. Okay, so you, you're you're kind of – you got a, you're all over the board a little bit with the, the youth kids? Yeah, yeah, middle school and this and – Coaching pro, I, I do a lot of coaching when I can, when I have the time. I love it. I love to give back to the kids, and I, I just, you know, really love to work with linemen because uh, in my thing in youth sports, that's the most undercoached position. Everybody coaches running backs and DBs, and and alignment just get told to get low and go harder. So I really like to. Uh, Coach the linemen. No love for linemen. No love. None at all. I was a guard. And linemen in high don't even want to be linemen because when you're a kid, you're watching the quarterback and the running back. So you have to teach them to embrace being the big lineman and being loving the position, offense and defense. No, you're not going to get the ball, but you're still valued. You know, so it, it takes some mental work for some of them. Being selfless is being a lineman. Can we Absolutely. agree on that statement? Especially the offensive lineman. I was a defensive lineman, but I played both. But yeah, definitely. You're not going, especially in little league. It's all about running backs and quarterbacks at that age. So you know, they they have to understand that they may not get the attention, but we let them know how valuable they are because without them, nobody would be doing anything. Coach Jackson, I talked to him about uh, life after football. I've talked to everybody who I've talked to, Beanie. Everyone I've talked to, uh, life after football. It's mm -hmm. obviously super important, but it's something that they can't see as a youth. But I'm guessing you guys are talking about them and mentioning a lot too, because football comes to an end. Father time wins eventually against your body. Right. What do you impart to kids for life after football? We all went to Ohio State. We all dreamed of being first round picks and playing for 20 years. You know, we did. You know, I played a few years in the NFL, but no, nowhere what I dreamed and anticipated on doing. You have to adjust. So, you know, you have to be prepared. You have to be prepared to be an educated man. You have to be prepared behavior wise. You have to be prepared with all the new pressures that's on this youth that weren't on us as social media and everybody knowing everything. So, you have to really put a lot more pressure on these kids. They don't normally get it. From everybody's home life is easier than when we were growing up. Parents are easier than not giving kids spankings. Grandma and the neighbors not in your business. So you know they come to the football program, and we just want to instill discipline in these kids, and because discipline will take you a long way, whether it's sports, whether it's business, whether it's whatever. Where are you from? Originally Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. Where at in Chicago? Uh, so half my life I grew up on the west side of Chicago with my mom, then half the half I moved to the south side of Chicago with my dad. So a little bit of both. Um, what high school? I went to a school called Thornton Township. So okay. I was in Harvey, like right on the edge of Chicago. Uh, it's the like Indiana border, right? Indiana uh, border ish. Kinda, yeah. It was a school with a lot of pro athletes. Antoine Winfield. I mean, not Antoine Winfield. Antoine Randall and Napoleon. We had like when I was in the league, we had like eight guys in the NFL at one time. So. Wow. Yeah. It's a wow. sports school. Listen, the South Side people get a little crazy. I got a roommate. She went to Queen of Peace, and then her brother played football at De La Salle. Yeah. So the South Side it, people don't play. You know, Chicago has transitioned. When I was younger, the West Side was AKA the bad side, and the South Side was the better side because it had homes and it had this and that. And now through gentrification, the West Side, which is closer to downtown, is a little bit better neighborhoods, and the South Side is gone down. So it's kind of changed, but you know, it's a big city. You got beautiful, great parts, and you got parts that's you know, rough, so. White Sox or Cubs? I'm White Sox. My brother's Cubs. But I, I'm not a big baseball guy, but my granddad was a White Sox guy, so I was a White Sox guy. We talk about injuries. Uh, I think Beanie's last team he was with was the Ravens. He tore his Achilles. I tore mine. What was your last team? My last NFL team was the Vikings. And, and what was the I injury? Played a, uh, a ruptured hamstring, tore it off the bone. Oh, my God. Yeah. 
so that we know that, t that Father Time is undefeated, right? Mm -hmm. Coach Jackson says it's like his knowledge he imparts is it's like a woman who stays the same age. Someday she's not gonna love you anymore. <laughs> you you yeah, ever heard that one? Yeah. Well, you know, it's a lot of luck involved. Um, you know, just being healthy and. It's a rough business, man. It's a business of violence, you know, control violence. So, you know, you sign up for it, you, you learn to love it. It's not for everybody. It can give you great things in life, but definitely football teaches you great lessons. Um, so it was all worth it, you know. Um, you know, you don't always take it as far as you wanted to. Uh, you know, I did make it to the NFL. That's an accomplishment, but I didn't accomplish what I dreamed of accomplishing. But you have to adjust, you know, and that's a big adjustment when somebody's been – doing one thing for, you know, their whole life. So we all had to go through that. And that's what we, you know, we, we never kill a kid's dream, but we want them to be prepared and well-rounded young men. What do you do now? I'm the CEO of a tech company. I like that. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Where you, where do you have to travel to? I mean, you're in a Westerville, right? You live in Westerville? Yeah, well, we all coach in Westerville. We live in Westerville, but um, I'm all over the place. Um, got new things going where... Um, I have some things that I have to travel, like Indiana, Alabama. So wow, you know. you're getting all over. Yeah, I have to. Well, um, this, this new tech company, it's not new now, but we've transitioned to some bigger things, so it's requiring a lot more travel. How often do you hear, wow, you're a big guy, did you play in the NFL? <laughs> you got that one I've on? been here a while, I'm a big guy since I was, you know, <laughs> eight. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm immune to it, it's no big deal. I guess I am too big right now. I need to drop a few, but yeah, I've I've been a large human being for quite a while. <laughs> for real? Yeah, right? Yeah. Ever since your kid, how big are your kids? Can your kids ever carry the ball? Are they, are they too big to carry the ball? So last year, we probably had the best youth. We, we should have took the team national. It was the best youth team probably in the country. I mean, we everybody on our – nobody we couldn't come to this tournament because nobody on the team could make the weight limit as far as the skill. They were all gigantic. This year, they're not as large. We had a couple kids that had to, you know, drink water and bread for a couple of days to make the weight. But, um, so my kid, my son last year played quarterback. He wouldn't have made the weight, so he didn't come here. But he's seventh grade. He's 12. He's 5'11", 160. So, there you go. He's a horse. Yeah. Will you ask him to ever embrace the lineman life? He plays quarterback and DN. Starts on both. He's, if he if he remains a quarterback, he'll be like the size of Cam Newton. So, you know, it's just he's very good. He has a cannon arm. Um, you know, everybody knows who he is. He, he so that's what he wants to do. But he plays DN as well. But he, if you ask him, he's gonna say quarterback, and he loves quarterback. But yes, you know, I have to teach him D lines. But that's my love. But he plays both sides. The quarterback is definitely his love. My younger son is is even taller. He's I don't even know if football would be his number one thing. He, he, He's uh, projected to be 6'9", oh so my God. Um, we'll see. You know, he you might six grow. Five, six, six. I'm 6'6". Six, six. Their mom is 5'11", and some change. So they don't really have a choice but to be large. So, you know, you, you don't ever know what these kids are really going to grow into. My youngest son could be anything from a left tackle to a power forward to, you know, I, I don't know. We'll just see how his body does and if he stays slimmer or if he gets big, you know. But he's definitely going to be a, a very large person. Do you? push other sports multi-sport my kids have to play two sports and then we'll see where it goes from there but i when i say have to i just believe in multi-sport i don't believe in all this individualizing kids at a young age in sports because every sport teaches you different things it teaches you things you don't even know and the most well-rounded athletes are two sport athletes you could transition into one sport later but start off with two three sports this state level competition from all over the state but a team from uh, in between Akron and Canton, right, with Green. Guys beat them up pretty good. And then next you have, I can't remember who you guys, uh, hey, Delray's, Delray's. Yes. Yeah, so that's another Columbus area team. Mm -hmm. And then whoever in the finals tomorrow potentially, probably going to be someone you haven't seen before. Do you like them playing teams blind? You don't know what you're getting because there's no video on it, right? No, no nobody likes to play teams by. Um, but you know we're prepared. I mean, um, one of the teams that's, that's I think one is a couple of times is in our is in our conference, Old and Tangy. Um, so we know about them. That's the only team we actually know about because we played them this year. Um, and um, but other than that, no, you just gotta be prepared. And we tell our kids we don't play other people. We play ourselves. We feel like if we play our best game and execute, then I don't think we can be beat. I just feel like if we play our best, then our best is the best. What do you think of the facility? It's unbelievable. We, 
we talk about this facility as an example because we want something like this in Columbus. We talked about doing this ourselves pre-pandemic, and that kind of got um, curtailed a little bit. But it's unbelievable. I mean, baseball, soccer, football, it's unbelievable. It's, 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 it's very, very nice. They run it efficiently. Everything is on time. There's no complaints at all. It's great. All right. You got anything else for me? No, that's it. You're a great man. Privileged to be interviewed by you. <laughs> I got to get you some stickers. Thank you for the time. Good luck to you guys moving forward. All right. Thank you.